you are only 22 years old, but you have achieved so many things already. So, how does it feel? Well, it's uh, been quite a phenomenal achievement, but I, I don't look at it in a way that, okay, what I've done is where, you know, that's my life, that I can't, that's it, my end, end for me, because I always believe you've got a lot more to give in life and to, to give back to society. Because if it wasn't for the help of the people in my life to get to where I am today, I, I'd never be who I am. So in order to give back to the community, I've been doing various things to be able to go around the world, empower people, inspire people that no matter the age, race, religion, culture, where you are from in society, everybody has the right to be extraordinary in life. Because there's only one of us and we're unique in various different ways. And when you have that determination to go out there and make something happen, you'll realize that people will look at you in a way that and they'll say, oh wow, you mean something in life. You are somebody and want to be a part and associated with your life. And that way you get so much support from all around the world. And I think it's phenomenal to have come this far in life. And I think there's always a lot more you can do. I grew up in a very poor community in the UK. And when people hear United Kingdom, London, they think, ah, glitz and glamour everywhere. But it's not always the case, because I grew up in a very poor community in the UK, uh, in London, and almost 98% of the people were from the Bangladeshi community, and they didn't have jobs. And uh, my parents have never worked, and it was a very difficult upbringing to be able to look up to them and say, you people are, your community are my role model, I'm going to look up to you, because when so many people are into drugs, are into violence, you need inspirational figures who can guide you and motivate you and mentor you to some extent to go a positive pathway in life. But for me, it was all about my cousin who inspired me to get into, into business. And I set up my first uh, business at the age of 14. And it was a web design company whilst in school that I ran uh, during lunch breaks, you know, just to get myself to, to be educated with the whole idea of the real world, rather than just follow a stereotypical route which society has presented us with school, college, university. So I ran a web design company for two years, learned a lot, and then explored various other avenues to go into stock trading at 16. But uh, there was one question that really bugged me in life. And that was, when I leave this world, what will I personally be remembered for? And that's not something we give a lot of thought to. And my idea is to, to leave behind a legacy, not just for me personally, but to touch the lives of people all around the world. And the first step I took to achieving that was I wrote my first book called The World at Your Feet at the age of 17. And really to inspire and motivate people that when you are young, you can do, still do exceptional things. That it's not always about what your parents tell you to do. It's not always about what society presents you with. Or it's not always about being spoon-fed in life, but being able to stand on your own, on your own two feet and make something happen. Then people look at you in a way and manner thinking, wow, you are somebody extraordinary and want to support you all the way. So over the past few, few years, I set up a global campaign called the Inspire One Million to inspire at least one million people around the world. And Nepal is now the 24th country I've been to. I've now reached out to over 880,000 people in audience size to deliver over 700 events. In relation to leaving behind a legacy, in relation to entrepreneurship, in relation to financial literacy and motivating young people. And that's been my, my journey. I've done various other things as well, uh, including developing a business board game to educate young people about entrepreneurship. And the fact that I'm only 22 now and I've only just literally started my whole journey in the real world, that backstory, that back journey has so much effect on in, in who I've become as an individual and I always feel there's a lot more you can do. And it's my passion now to really leave behind this legacy to want to make a difference in this world. It has to be when I was around 18 years old. I uh, took a, 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 I was very, because I never really spent money on what I did. But it was the first time I spent money to be able to promote who I am, what I do, and why, what I want to achieve in this world. And I paid around £600 to be on a magazine that I went out to every single university across the UK. And for six months I had absolutely nothing and I thought to myself, wow, that is £600 completely gone down the drain. When you have, have this element of patience in life that you can wait for certain things to happen or you can wait and keep doing what you're doing but not rely on something to happen, and that's how I was. And six months down the line, I received a phone call from somebody who would not expect to get a phone call in the entire life. I got a phone call from the former first lady of Nigeria and I was completely shocked. The thing that somebody so high up in the, in the hierarchy can actually give you a phone call and say, Sabrina, oh, I read your article in this magazine, found it very inspirational. And uh, she invited me to go over to Nigeria. And why I say this moment in my life was so big and dramatic and changed the way, my way of thinking is because Yes, three and a half thousand people attended. Yes, maybe three and a half thousand people were inspired. But there was one young guy who completely changed my way of thinking. 
Because I always thought to myself that the UK is the world. That Tower Hamlets, where I grew up in London, was the world. Anything else out there is just fiction, is fantasy, that I won't ever be able to go there. Now, to have stepped foot in Nigeria was a complete dream, complete thing that I never thought would happen. But to have changed the life of one person, for me it was this one young guy who was a drug addict for the past five years, and he was so inspired by what I had said that even though he chose to come into this event himself, he went through rehab just three months after the event, just to really get his uh, way of thinking back to positive, back to making a difference in his life, making something happen. And during those three months he'd be writing a story because he was so inspired that a young 17-year-old was able to write his own book. He wanted to inspire other Nigerians by writing his own book. And just after that three months in rehab, he spent another six months saving up money just to get a UK visa and UK ticket just to fly over to London on a random Sunday morning. And I didn't know who he was, I didn't know he existed. On a random Sunday morning, he comes knocking on my door just to shake my hand and say the words, Sabro, you have changed my life. And that opened my eyes. That opened my eyes to not just believe that in fact the world is all, you know, running around in, in, with money, it's not always about the fame, it's not always about the success. When somebody comes, makes that much of an effort to fly up and shake your hands and change my life, it gave me the whole meaning about, about that feeling you have inside, where moments are priceless in life, but no matter fame, money, success, ever buy that feeling you have inside. And for me that was a priceless moment, it gave me that wake up call that actually, why am I limiting myself to just the UK and, and in fact Nigeria, why not travel the whole world? And that's where the idea of legacy came. That's where the idea of me wanting to be, when I leave this world, want to be remembered for something. And the idea is to inspire one million. To want to be remembered for having changed the lives of at least one million people around the world. I don't care how many countries it takes to reach the one million, as long as I've reached and inspired one million people to make a difference in their life. And that's how my journey you know, happened. And for me, that's that one moment that completely changed my life. I don't feel that it's always about having that recognition under your belt. And I congratulate actually all the, the shortlisted people in the 120 who then get shortlisted for 12 and then the winner of all. Congratulations that you made it this far. But at the end of the day, you look at it in a manner that actually, yes, you've been privileged enough to be shortlisted. That in itself is a wonderful achievement. And you look at your life and what you've achieved to get there. Because there's 7 billion people in this world and you're the 120 people who's been recognized out of those 7 billion people. So you look at it in that perspective, in that manner, and how privileged you are. So I say to everybody who has been short, well done, but at the end of the day, if you don't make it through to the top 12 and you don't win, it's not the end of the world. Because the people already out there are seeing you as an inspiration. People already who know about you, hear about you, and have seen your profile, they see you as role models, they see you as iconic figures in this world. So you don't want to let them down, no matter what you're doing, because they love you for who you are, not what you win or not recognition. Because at the end of the day, it's not like having a stamp of approval saying that you are the best in the world. You don't need that. You don't need a piece of paper or a stamp telling you you're great. You should know that from day one. So having that belief and passion to keep doing what you're doing because that's what the world loves you for. And that's what the world wants to remember you for. So I say to everyone, you know, yourself and all the other 119 individuals, keep going at it because end of the day that's the legacy you want to leave behind and the world knows you and remembers you for that. Thank you so much Davir for your inspiring work and for sharing all your stories. It was really great talking to you. My pleasure. So thank you for the wonderful interview.